Shakur would do if he were black. <laughs> but I'm, uh, I'm not going to do my PowerPoint. Uh, I just want to uh, appeal to you, uh, talk to you about what I see here, the possibilities that I see, the hope that I have having been here for the past day and a half. I want to give you some bad news about two problems that we cannot uh, unsubscribe or opt out of, the problems of the environment and the economy, we're all signed up for that. And I also want to talk to you about the solution and the role that I hope folks like yourselves can help us get to. Um, many of you could be doing a lot of other things with your time and your talent. Many of you could make a lot more money, be doing uh, a great job getting us to buy more pet food or, or whatever people do, uh, using the, the stuff you know how to do, but you're trying to figure out how to fix the country. And there are two big problems that we're faced with now that we can't easily get out of. Number one, I want to talk about the environment. I don't know if y'all saw the news today, uh, but the, the guy Hansen, who first rang the alarm about global warming, came out and said, we are really at the last moment uh, being able to do anything about the catastrophe that we are about to break down in our head. And um, myself, when I first started hearing about global warming, I said, man, this is terrible for those polar bears. Uh, I'm you know, sad about them, but I got other things to worry about. Uh, that was before Katrina. That was before we had the California wildfires because the drought condition in California is so bad. People may not know that most of the people who lost their lives in the wildfires were Latino farm workers. Mm -hmm. They didn't have the technology called the cell phone to get informed, to get out of the way, as did the suburban homeowners. The government called everybody with a cell phone to get out of there. They didn't call the Latino farm workers. And they mm -hmm. burned a lot mm -hmm. in the field. That was before Iowa bred back to the country now underwater. That was before a tornado walked down the middle of downtown Atlanta. Mm -hmm. You know, we're at a situation now where uh, the scariest channel on TV is the weather channel. You know, if you want to get scared, uh, <laughs> Don't use your Netflix to get a horror film, just watch the weather show. Uh, that's, it's not coming, it's here. We've got to deal with that. The other problem, though, is the economy is now in the toilet and starting to swirl. And uh, we're in the toilet with it. We're about to experience something called stagflation, which we haven't had to deal with since 1970. Everybody's excited about getting a new president in there. Well, whichever one you're for, Stagflation is the worst possible economic outcome for any market economy. Why? When, when energy prices go up, it pushes all prices up because it takes energy to make everything, but it also pulls jobs down. So you get prices going up, jobs going down. Stagflation, the worst possible economy. The last time you had a Democratic president, a Democratic Congress, and stagflation, that guy was named Jimmy Carter. Okay? So we could have another failed presidency to follow this one. How do we deal with that? Well, here's our challenge. If we try to stimulate the economy by drilling and burning our way to get better energy prices, we'll bake the planet. If we don't stimulate the economy, we'll have social unrest, uh, and people who are suffering now will suffer worse. How do we get out of this dilemma? That's where you come in. How do we get out of the dilemma? How do we grow the economy without baking the planet? Well, there is an answer, and the answer is called building a green economy that's strong enough to lift people out of poverty. If we're going to beat global warming, we get to create a whole bunch of jobs. To beat global warming, you're going to have to weatherize millions of buildings all across this country. That's thousands of contracts, millions of jobs, billions of dollars of economic stimulation. We're going to have to put up solar panels. You guys fly on planes all the time. You fly over all those houses. You look down. How many solar panels do you see? We're going to have to put up millions of solar panels all across the country. Thousands of contracts, millions of jobs billions of dollars of investment. We're going to have to uh, uh, plant millions of trees. Uh, we're going to have to uh, build uh, wind farms and wave farms. We're going to have to manufacture uh, wind turbines, millions of them. We can put Detroit back to work just manufacturing the wind turbines, 80,000 parts per wind turbine. There is an economic future out there that is green, that's inclusive, 
uh, that helps us to bring down the demand for energy by weatherizing and helps us also diversify the supply for energy by going with solar, wind, and other technologies. We can have a crash program, a World War II level program to weatherize and solarize the country and in that way beat poverty and pollution at the same time. Restart the economy, kickstart the economy, get people out of poverty, and forever the need for oil wars and resource wars, bring this country together, have a green new deal. There's a bright future out there. Let me tell you what's standing in the way.